Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Aaron. Today we're going to be talking a bit about IP addresses and how having your IP address in the wrong hands can affect you and what they can do with your IP addresses. Now, I know there's a lot of, I want to say, stupid videos on YouTube explaining this kind of stuff. Firstly, there's one I saw, I, I want to say a year ago, maybe a few years ago. Um, it was made by Code Dextral. Now, he made the most retarded video I've ever seen, which is mainly what a lot of these skids think IP addresses are used for. They think it's okay. They're just going to, what, DDoS me or something. Um, it, it, it's actually, it can be a lot more elaborate than that, depending on your router and what kind of information you have on your router and what the attacker is mainly using it from or for. Sorry. Um, so this is what I'm going to kind of explain in this video, uh, you know, what your IP address can be used for in the worst circumstances, what people can do with your IP addresses and kind of how you can prevent this from happening to you. Um, so we're going to go through a few of the things that people can do with your IP address. Now, please remember this is not in any order. I'm not listing them by like superiority or something. This is just how I'm listing them. So <laughs> the first one, as you all can expect, is going to be DOS attacks or denial of service attacks. Now, there's a lot of people that call them DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks and DOS attacks essentially have the same aspect. They're just attacks that are that attack you in a different kind of way. Uh, distributed uh, denial of service attacks are basically a bunch of a bunch of computers, a bunch of routers sending information to you. And a denial of service attack is one computer with a higher network speed than you sending uh, a lot of data to your router that it can't it can't handle all that traffic. So it goes down. Um, so yeah, a DOS attack is probably one you should be familiar with already. If you're not, then that's probably the most common one you run into. A lot of uh, skids just, you know, <laughs> dosing you, I guess. Um, it happens a lot. A lot of people do it. Um, it's not something you should be very scared about. If someone does DOS you, um, from then on, you can, you know, just know to us. You can just know that this person isn't going to be, you know, isn't going to do anything harmful with your information. He's just probably just an idiot. Um, so yeah, that's the main one that I want to get off the way because I, I, I don't like explaining that to a lot of people. Um, it's just very, it gets very repetitive. So the next one is ISP doxes, stuff like that. Now, if you don't know what dox is, it's basically gathering information on you. Most of the time, this information will be public information. This information may be gathered from public records, stuff of that sort, maybe Facebook pages, social media accounts, stuff like that. Now, ISP... Uh, information gathering is a little bit more different. I'm not too familiar with it. I know the basics. I know people will, when you have someone's IP address, you can actually see uh, who's hosting that, um, that IP, who owns the IP address because you don't own that IP address. The, the, the company or the internet service provider that you're uh, hosting from is actually um, either owns or rents said IP address. Now, if someone does check the IP address, they can actually check online who owns that IP address and will give them all their contact information. Now, I've seen a few people use the information about the, um, the internet service provider. They use their information to try and scare people because most of the time they'll give you a address or a location which is local to the area that you're in. Now, this is because, you know, your IP address may be uh, hosted on a server that's located in uh, the same city as you or something. But most of the time, I know this happens with a few American people. Um, sometimes your IP address will show the exact state, maybe city and town that you live in, but most of the time it wouldn't. But anyways, that's nothing you should be scared of, okay? Um, if they do get that information, that's nothing crazy, but that's not essentially what an ISP docs is. An ISP docs is when someone calls your, when they have all that information, they can get that as public information. Anyone can get the information on any IP address. Um, there's, there's websites on this. You can Google more about this, guys. Um, there's also ISP doxes. Now, ISP doxes are essentially using that information to get a hold of your um, ISP, and then they try to social engineer them, or so, I think it's social engineer. That's the right way of saying it. Yeah, social engineer them, or socially engineer them. I don't know. Social engineering, basically, that's all it is. So they're just trying to like convince them that they're the person that owns the router, and then they'll give them information on you. Now, this happened a while back. I'm pretty sure this happened with Comcast and Verizon. I don't think this is still a big thing in any other countries apart from the US, maybe in a few other countries that I may not be aware of, but I know this happens a lot in the US. I'm not sure if it's still a big thing. This was maybe a year or two ago, but this is something that can be quite dangerous because this can give uh, attackers, uh, potentially very malicious attackers, your private information, which I'm sure you don't want to be given into the wrong hands. Um, 
a lot of companies have you know updated the way they take on our customer support calls and whatnot so this shouldn't happen again it shouldn't happen to you if it has happened to you before it shouldn't happen again um now there is data now they may use your ip address um let's say this is let's say you visited a website that website um was hacked and all the information on all their clients were leaked their ip addresses etc um what would happen is your ip address would then be obviously out in the open now most now most of the time people wouldn't touch ip address they probably wouldn't give a crap about it because there's so many entries on say database then most of the time you can assume they're not going to be using your ip address what most people do do is they redistribute these databases or they redistribute these IP addresses. Um, let's say you play a video game and someone has your IP address from a video game. Someone may make a web, someone may have a website or may know of a website that buys player information for your game. So they buy your account, they buy the following information, they buy your account username and your IP address. This way, when someone goes online, let's say you someone got your IP address from a game called Minecraft. There's Minecraft resolvers online. These Minecraft resolvers essentially compare usernames to find the corresponding IP address. That's why if you're in a massive data leak and your IP address just goes out and it's from something similar to like a video game or something, you can assume that will be one of the main causes or one of the main um, ways it will be used. Someone may try to contact you and extort you with this information. That may be what some people, you know, want to do with the information. However, you can uh, be assured that most of the time, if your information is gathered from a, a data leak, someone probably wouldn't target you directly. They probably just put you up on a public uh, paste or something so people can view that, copy that. Maybe someone you know could find one of these data leaks and try to find you on there. And if you're on there, then they can do whatever they want to do with your information. Now there is IP spoofing. Now, let me just take a sip of my drink here, guys. One second, my mouth's getting dry. So, someone may use your IP address to access secure networks, stuff of that sort. So, chances are you're running a home router. So your, your router or your internet connection isn't being used for anything business related. It's just being used for your home Wi-Fi. Let's say you run, you just use it for Netflix, Google, games, stuff of that sort. Probably don't have anything to worry about. But for a lot of big corporations and big businesses, if they if some if the IP addresses get leaked or someone has access to their IP addresses or knows all of their IP ranges and whatnot, they can use these IP addresses to gain access to networks they shouldn't have access to. Because in the internet, you can pretend to be someone else. You can spoof your IP address to essentially pretend you're someone else. When they're not, um, this uh, now the main cause of this, um, that people can do this through um, networking basically, and it's a, it's a very elaborate thing to go into, and it's very technical. So, and I feel like a lot of people watching this aren't gonna understand a lot of it. If you want me to make a technical version, let me know. But this is essentially for people who want to gain access to secure networks that don't allow access to any IP addresses apart from a select few people could use this or stuff like that, or for stuff like that. So that's something to definitely um, keep an eye out for if you are using your internet connection to run a business. Um, and yeah, so the next one, which is probably extremely common, and this probably happens to a shit ton of you. Um, this is malicious attacks slash brute force attacks. Now, when you buy a router, chances are they're not going to come with any external clients installed such as SSH, um, Telnet, etc. However, there are a lot of um, routers from Cisco, Verizon, and um, I believe Comcast is also one of them. Surprising, Comcast is just everywhere, to be honest with you. If you guys are from America, don't use Comcast. Anyways, <laughs> um, I don't really see this happening much in the UK. Um, I'm 100% I'm sure this does happen a lot in the UK, though. However, it's, I, I don't really know much about uh, how what specific providers are affected in the UK. But anyways, once you do buy a router, um, sometimes, I'm pretty sure not all the time, but you may have certain clients installed, such as web clients that um, are only accessible privately, but maybe you've configured something incorrectly and it's ended up uh, opening it to your public IP address so people can access it just through having your IP address. So let's say you have um, a web server open on your machine and that web server is running um, a backend service. So let's say they're running, I don't know, 
just a simple uh, script that allows them to essentially um, run uh, like uh, remote command exploit stuff like that. Um, it's obviously a bit weird to go into because I don't want to go too complex into this, but essentially people can. This this is very unlikely to happen to you if you're running a home network. I'm just gonna say that, but people can use this to essentially find out what services you run and potentially brute force or hack into those services. It's very weird to explain, but the chances are this won't happen to you because if you're running a residential um, connection, the chances are you don't have any of this installed. But if you do have software installed, you want to make sure that these ports aren't publicly available because if they are, then, you know, um, things can go extremely wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's really all for the um, what, what people can use them for. There's probably a few more things that I missed out. But, you know, I put this list together within a few minutes because I really wanted to make this video because I was like, fuck it, why not? Anyways, now we have how to protect yourself from this. Now, if you're running a residential connection, chances are you are given a dynamic IP address. Now, you may be thinking, what is a dynamic IP address? What is a static IP address? I haven't actually mentioned what a static IP address is. I haven't even mentioned a static IP address, but we're going to get into that right now. So... When you have a when you buy a router from your ISP or when you're not a router, but when you buy essentially um, access to the internet or to the yeah to the internet, once you buy access to their uh, connection, but what what they will do is they'll route you a specific uh, IP address. Now, chances are they're going to give you a dynamic one. What that means is your IP address is not going to stay the same. That means you can re you can let's say you turn off your router wait for like 10 minutes turn it back on you will have, chances are if you have a dynamic ip address you will have a new address assigned to you that is because if they assign you a static ip address um people use them mainly for businesses because if you run a giant i can't say the word but if you run a giant business and um you run dynamic ip addresses it can be very difficult for you to set up a security system that only allows uh, IP authentication or or one of the security parameters are IP address authentication. Now, what this means is, let's say you want to visit a website. That website may not be available to anyone, anyone in the world, only a select range of IP addresses, okay? So, if you have a dynamic IP address, every time your IP address change, changes, you need to go to every single one of these services you're running. And if you're a giant business, chances are you're going to be running a lot and you're going to change every single one to your IP address every time it changes. A static IP address basically knocks that out of the window. Basically, it means you have the one IP address and that IP address is yours. Like, it's not going to change unless you I believe if you request it to be changed, it can be changed. But, um, yeah, chances are you don't have one. If you do, you can call up your um, ISP and ask them to change. I'm pretty sure if you're on a residential connection, they'll let you change for free. Or they will change your IP address for you. If you're on a commercial or not commercial, if you're on a uh, business uh, business a business connection or business router, they may ask you to change your. They may ask you to sorry. They may change your IP address and that's all. But a way to kind of avoid this is not to sign up to any websites that seem like they're brand new or don't use um credentials that you'd use on certain websites maybe i don't know um it's very weird because ip addresses are kind of the foundation of the internet like you can't do anything without an ip address and ip address is basically what tells the internet you are you okay so it's very hard for you to kind of bypass this feature unless you you know use a vpn you route everything um you route all your traffic through tour some fucking crazy shit like that I don't know. Now, if you want to go through this entire giant step, and I really don't think you should because it's not something that you should really care about. If you're just the average person, if you're a business, there's a lot there's, you, there's a lot more different, um, more more um, safer security precautions you could take. However, if you're just the average person who doesn't want the IP address to be, you know, given out to people on Xbox or whatnot, just use a VPN. If you don't know how to use a VPN, let me know in the comment section. Maybe Google, Google a little bit before you leave a comment because it's very easy to do. If you guys still need help, I'll make a video on this. Um, but yeah, um, that's essentially the video. I'm sorry if I missed a few things or if I completely got something wrong. Um, I'm making this at midnight, basically, and I'm very tired. But, you know, I said, fuck it. Let me just make this for you guys. So please like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you for the support on my last few videos. Bye-bye. the fuck do I end this shit?